Well, I want to talk now about surveillance on the government level and the ways in which it's increasing despite calls for more transparency. Last month, we told you how several employees at the Food and Drug Administration were the targets of a major surveillance program by their employer after it got out that they were reporting concerns they had to lawmakers and other officials. Well, it turns out the FDA is not alone, and I want to put this in perspective here. In total, there are 4.443 million federal government employees, according to a count made in 2010. Last year, non-intelligence agencies spent $5.6 billion to, quote, safeguard classified information. And the FDA was one of the first to establish the total surveillance on employees, including personal emails. The program used by federal agencies is called Spectre 360, and it can read comments posted on social networking sites and gain full access to hard disk data. Jessalyn Radak, Director of National Security and Human Rights is, uh, and the Director of the Government Accountability Projects is here. She's also the author of the book Traitor, the Whistleblower and the American Taliban. Uh, Jessalyn, good to see you again. You too. Um, I know that, that we sort of really talked about this when, when the information came out about the FDA. Uh, let me just ask you quickly, what do you know about this Spectre 360? Just that it can really drill down on everything you're doing, including keystrokes, including Facebook posts, including screenshots, everything. Now, from what I understand, I mean, the current policy as a federal employee, I know tons of people here in Washington who work for the government, when you log onto your computers, you see something that lets you know, um, a banner saying you have no reasonable expectation of privacy. Um, you know, your personal email accounts can be monitored, especially when you're at work, they can be accessed through a government computer. So, I mean, isn't this just par for the course? If you work for the government, shouldn't you expect that you're monitored? Well. I think all government employees in today's climate realize that they have a limited expectation of privacy at work. Um, the problem is when you start drilling down specifically and targeting certain people, especially whistleblowers who are supposed to be protected, um, you end up putting them in a in a lose lose kind of situation. Yeah, it seems to me in the case of the FDA, at least, I mean, the, the system worked exactly right. Employees who worked for the organization were concerned about the products. They were concerned for people's safety, so they told lawmakers. Uh, that seems to me an example of things working right. Having their employer then come crack down harder on them seems to be a, a system gone wrong. Well, yeah, and in this case, the FDA was monitoring their communications with Congress and their communications with the Office of Special Counsel. And you have a First Amendment right to communicate with Congress. Um, the the lose-lose proposition is that a whistleblower now can either remove incriminating information from his or her agency and be charged with under the Espionage Act, or they can go ahead and complain to Congress or the Inspector General or the Office of Special Counsel via their work computer and risk being monitored and fired and retaliated against in, in numerous kinds of ways for that. From what I'm hearing, Jocelyn, and, I, and I'm wondering if you're hearing the same, that, that in a lot of federal agencies, uh, that employees are sort of um, freaking out about all this, that, that they're learning more and more that this goes on, and, and it's making them less apt to come forward for fear of retaliation. Um, are, are you hearing the, you know, the same, and, and what do you um, think the impact of this could be? I think what's having a bigger chilling effect is the fact that we have a crackdown, an unprecedented crackdown on whistleblowers for allegedly mishandling, allegedly classified information. And these are really people trying to expose fraud, waste, abuse, and crime. And I think these very public prosecutions of people under the Espionage Act is what's having um, the real, the real chilling message. And we've been hearing uh, the Espionage Act talked about uh, pretty recently mm -hmm. uh, in regards to WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange. I know he um, has been sort of, uh, you know, in the Ecuadorian embassy for the last few months. He's been told he, he is welcome to, to have asylum there. Um, and he says his concern as far as being extradited to Sweden for questioning is that Sweden will then um, be able to have him extradited to the United States. He says he fears he'll be tried under the es Espionage Act. And he did speak uh, to the public over the weekend. And I want to play just a little bit about what he said. The United States must renounce its witch hunt against WikiLeaks. 
The United States must dissolve its FBI investigation. The United States must vow that it will not seek to prosecute our staff or our supporters. The United States must pledge before the world that it will not pursue journalists for shining, shining a light on the secret crimes of the powerful. So Julian Assange calling uh, for some pretty serious uh, changes to be made. Uh, what are the, what's the likelihood that some of these things will be, um, you know, some of these wishes will be heeded? The likelihood right now is not high, but my clients, three of whom he personally called out, Thomas Drake, William Binney, and John Kiriakou, are extremely grateful um, that Assange, in his very brief speech, saw fit to mention them. Um, I think there's an accusation out there that Julian Assange is only about Julian Assange, and clearly he cares about the plight of whistleblowers who, like him, are being criminally pursued under the Espionage Act. And there are persistent rumors that there is an indictment um, against Julian Assange here in the U.S., um, and they want to try him. But that hasn't espionage. been made public yet, and, and he has not been, been charged yet. So, so uh, you know, a lot of people are, are saying, you know, what's the what's the big hoopla? Uh, he hasn't been charged. Why is he Why is he so concerned? Well, the big hoopla is that um, neither the United States nor Sweden promised not to extradite him if they got their hands on him. Um, so it very much seems to imply that the sexual assault allegations, are, there have been no charges filed, but that those are a pretext to get him to a country that has a history of expediting people to the U.S. Um, to be tortured. Um, let, let's kind of get back to sort of what, what we're seeing, though, within federal agencies. Uh, I know that the five people involved in the surveillance operation at the FDA have filed a lawsuit, um, but, but what course of action do people in the federal government have uh, when it comes to um, defending themselves from uh, being prosecuted and persecuted for their actions? Well, whistleblowers under the Whistleblower Protection Act can um, make claims of fraud, waste, abuse, and dangers to public health and safety to the U.S. Office of Special Counsel. One of the big loopholes is that that does not cover intelligence employees or national security whistleblowers, who are arguably the ones you would most want to hear from. Yeah, it's really interesting. So often when we do hear about surveillance operations, uh, most people think we're talking about, uh, you know, defense and military and CIA, and it's really not just that. There's a whole a lot of other things going on that people need to be aware of. Uh, great to have you on, kind of giving us uh, your insight. Jessalyn Radak, uh, Director of National Security and Human Rights with the Government Accountability Project. Thank you. Thank you.